Hello, my name is Daniel Campbell. Welcome to a little show I like to do called On the Contrary. It's a show where I take a look at games that are incredibly popular and well received, and then try to find the little nagging things that you might not like about them, hopefully before you try to make your purchase. This episode is on Zelda Breath of the Wild, which at the time of the recording has only been out for about 24 hours. Let's go and get started, and I will say that I absolutely love this game. I think it is fantastic, and it deserves most of the praise it gets, but that is not without some caveats, because there are definitely some nagging issues about this game that need to be mentioned. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Now with how much emphasis that Nintendo has been putting on exploration in this game, and let's say it is a lot of fun, it is also an incredible pain in the ass whenever one thing comes along that makes it almost impossible to actually do that exploration. The glaring example of this is the rain in Hyrule. So when you're trying to climb a vertical surface and it starts raining, you automatically start to slip down. It makes it almost impossible to reach your destination with the stamina that the game gives you. Now this wouldn't be a huge deal except for the fact that it actually seems to be raining all the frigging time in Hyrule. I don't think I've gone a single in-game day without it actually raining at least once during the time. Next up on the list of mild annoyances is the inventory management. Now it's pretty quick to be able to throw things away and pick up new items and weapons, but it seems to happen all the time. Every single time you get into a fight an enemy will drop a weapon and of course your inventory is likely full. If you don't like having to stop for a few seconds every few minutes just to throw away a random weapon and then pick up a new one, then maybe consider that a mark against Zelda before you go into it. And another thing that I actually kind of enjoy but I could see a lot of people being annoyed by it is the game is actually very difficult. If you go wandering into an enemy camp unprepared, don't expect to be walking out unscathed. The combat is snappy and responsive, but a lot of times if you run into an enemy camp, you're going to get one-shotted, or maybe, if you're lucky, get hit two times before you die. Now, another big complaint, and this one really bothers me, is the controls just kind of feel wrong. It uses the Japanese standard of the A button being the affirmative for everything, and the B button being the back out or cancel button. Now this is standard fare for a lot of RPGs and Japanese games, but here in America, which is where I am, this is actually very uncommon and kind of annoying and takes a lot of getting used to. If that were the only thing, I probably wouldn't even bring it up in this video, but a lot of the rest of the controls feel really off as well. Now it's really difficult to articulate exactly how the controls feel off, but they just kind of do. For instance, whenever you're trying to switch your special ability from bombs to, say, the magnet special ability. Maybe it's just me, but the natural reaction for me is to be able to hold down the left bumper and then be able to switch to different things. But instead, tapping the left bumper will make you take out and use that special ability. Now I am kind of starting to get over this because I'm about 20 hours into the game now. Granted, that's only a small chunk of the game, which is insane to say out loud. But I'm still getting used to it and still actually making a lot of mistakes with my button presses, and that seems bad. Now, a small disclaimer, I did just come out of spending about 40 hours with Dragon Quest Builders, and the controls in that game are certifiably insane. Now, like I said before, I'm only about 20 hours in, but as far as I can tell, there's no kind of compendum for recipes. I know you can go over a completed dish and look at what you use to actually make it, but that is kind of falling short of a recipe book whenever the moment you eat that dish, you no longer have that recipe. Another complaint is that it doesn't seem to be anywhere to sell weapons. You can sell all kinds of useful things out of your inventory, but if you have an old crappy sword sitting in your inventory that you'd like a few rupees for, forget about it. Your best thing to do is just throw it away. So I didn't intend for the first episode of On the Contrary to be quite this short, but then I decided to tackle a game that is very, very good and doesn't have a whole lot of things wrong with it. Granted, I still have a lot of time to put into this game, so I may end up updating this video a little bit later with a few more complaints. One of the things I am very nervous about is the voice acting. One of the things I always loved about the Zelda series is the fact that it didn't have voice acting, and that way you can kind of imagine the way your favorite character sounded, and really to be honest, no voice actor is going to be able to match the power of your imagination in that sense. Whatever the character says, if they ever gave Link a voice, it would not sound like the version of Link that you have in your head, which for you is perfect. So any deviation from that at all is going to sound wrong. Now as far as I can tell, thankfully, Link is off limits in this regard. But other major characters are going to have voices, and that's a little unnerving. Hopefully they nail it and it's a non-issue, but voice acting is one of those things that's so easy to screw up that I am very nervous about it. 
But really, that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any other games that you know have been critically praised that you would like to see all the little things pointed out about, please let me know and I will try to get that video made. Thank you very much. Have an awesome day.